Sandy Hess from Caldwell Banker. Thank you, Sandy, for being with us and helping um, set up our Zoom meeting. Um, I want to say good morning to Dr. Debbie with our Cape Creek Unified School District and Eric Tuey with um, Times Media Group and Steve Morris uh, from State Farm back from fishing. I'd rather be fishing today. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Good morning. And then our ambassadors with us this morning, we have, uh, of course, Paul Kakuza with Quail Run Behavioral um, Health. We have Ashley Ware with our Desert Foothills Library. We have John McCombs with AZ Perfect Comfort. And we have Jen Miles with um, Tech for Life. So um, if I've missed somebody, I don't think I have, but um, welcome to everybody. And then, um, while we have a minute here, um, we, we have some time. So uh, we have some folks we haven't seen in a really long time uh, joining us. So if we could just go around the room and do, um, just introduce yourselves and, and who you are, that would be fantastic. And we're gonna start um, with, um, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me get order here. We're gonna start with um, uh, Amrish. Hi, uh, let's see, am I, yeah, you can, I'm not, uh, I, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm Amrish Pargav. I run the Mathnasium of Cave Creek, teaching math to kids, and uh, just enjoying that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Lisa Loftus. Hi, good morning. I am... Um, coming finally to a meeting and I'm very interested in learning some things today and we're with land surveying and engineering here in Cape Creek. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Carolyn Lynch. All right, how about Faith? Good morning. Hi, how are you, Patty? Doing excellent. Good. I'm just rolled out of bed for this, but I, um, I own Big Bronco in town, retail store, furniture and gifts, but I'm really curious where the PPP loan is at at this point, because I don't know what to do with it at this point. So I was like, okay, I got to come to this meeting. I have no idea what to do. So I'm excited to hear some ideas of how to handle this. And I will say that our meeting today um, is going to be kind of like a balcony view, um, but the two ladies that are joining us will um, be your resource to um, help you through the nitty gritty. It's not every single uh, um, case is the same. Is that kind of a, an a great assumption, CJ? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything is a little bit special. Every industry is a little bit different, but the process is generally the same. Gotcha. And Jane Perkins. Good morning. I'm representing the uh, Seroptimus organization here in town, and uh, we are still meeting uh, twice a month and uh, doing a kind of a virtual fundraiser and uh, going along our merry way, keeping things going. Very nice. Hey. Steve Woods. I'm Steve Woods with Tech Life Computers and Websites, and uh, Glad to be here today. Glad to have you. Aaron Vasquez. Good morning, neighbors. I am Aaron with AIC Insurance Independent in, uh, Agency. It's still early, and uh, I'm here in the office, as you guys see, so I'm excited for this meeting. Uh, Ashley Ware. Good morning, everybody. Um, I work at Desert Foothills Library. I'm the programming librarian, specifically with adult programs. Um, we have a lot of really awesome digital services right now and virtual programs. And Jen Miles. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jen Miles with Tech for Life Computer and Websites, and I'm so excited to see so many faces. So this will be a great welcome. John McCombs. Thanks, Patty. Uh, John McCombs, AZ Perfect Comfort, Commercial Residential Air Conditioning and Heating. 
the manufacturer's promotion. We're in the middle of it right now for new systems. Good time to get it maintained. And I, I, I do have a need. Um, for the first time in my life, I have a cat. And I don't know how to. The cat is smarter than me. So I need some help if anybody knows how to handle a cat. Thank you. <laughs> So somebody is okay, well, um, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I muted everyone. So Patty, you're going to need to unmute yourself. Tara. Good morning. Hello. I'm with the town of Cape Creek and I'm just uh, here to learn about the PPP and see if there's anything I can pass on to the business owners through our social media. Thank you. Um, let's see, we've got um, Steve Morse, like I said, back from uh, fish, fishing. <laughs> oh, hold on. Steve, you're muted. I can't, yeah, can you unmute yourself? Because I can't seem to do it for you. There we go. There Is that we better? Go. Yes. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, Steve Morse, I was playing hooky for a few days. I went back to my home state of Oregon to fish for a few days. And you know, uh, many of you read about and heard about the terrible fires in Oregon. I thought where I was going was going to be decimated and actually they did a wonderful job of protecting Diamond Lake, which is near Crater Lake, which a lot of you know about Crater Lake or have been there. And so I had a great trip, very thankful. From a state farm standpoint, we're crossing our fingers and hoping this darn hurricane season and fire season comes to an end quickly. Uh, Mother Nature has been a little brutal this year, but uh, thank goodness we have a strong company and we're, we're out there helping people. That's right. Thank you. Sandy Hess, are you still with us? I am here. Good morning. Um, I'm just not professionally prepared to be seen on camera this morning, but um, I manage our local Cobalt Banker Realty office at Westland and Scottsdale Road. I've got 60 great professional realtors. This is the strongest seller's market we've seen in 20 years. Very, very, very low of inventory. So if you know of anybody thinking about selling, now's the time to do that. So thank you. Thank you, Patty and Cece, for all that you do for us at the Chamber. Appreciate it. It's our pleasure. Deborah Jastro. Everybody, I feel weird having my hair braided in this virtual background, but that's okay. Um, or Tatum Insurance. Uh, I'm just I'm here because I miss everybody, and I want to see everybody have breakfast. And um, I'm enjoying the fact that my husband's taking care of my of our son right now, so I'm up to. <laughs> Other than that, that's really all that's that's going uh, going on here. I'm glad for cooler weather. Stay cool out there, guys. Dr. Debbie, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I know some of you were talking about weather and how uh, uh, cold versus hot. Um, I'm Debbie Burdick. I'm superintendent in Cave Creek, but I just got back from driving back from Colorado at midnight um, and spending four days in winter storm Billy. And I am really glad to be back where it's warm. So it's nice to see everybody. We've got a great crowd this morning. Paul Kakuza. Good morning, uh, Paul Kakuza. I'm the community liaison over at Quail Run Behavioral Health. And uh, with everything that's been going on, I keep myself pretty busy. So thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Eric Tui. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, in honor of the little bit of the brief fall that we had, I decided to wear my flannel today, you know, so I was there with you, Dr. Debbie, you know, in, in spirit, at least. So welcome back to, the, you know, the unfreezing temperatures. Um, the associate publisher with uh, Foothills Focus, North Valley Magazine, and also Love and Life After 50, some of your local publications around here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we uh, actually expanded Foothills Focus last month. And uh, it's a weekly out every single Wednesday. And we have a zone of uh, the Foothills Focus that hits up Carefree Cave Creek uh, down through Desert Ridge. So if you're looking to advertise in that region, I'm your guy. And uh, we also have digital programs as well where we can help you send out custom email blasts, um, reach people based on their age, interest, all sorts of things, voting preference. We had a lot of political stuff that we just finished up with as well. So if I can help you in any way, connect with your customers, that's what I'm here for. Thank you. Thank you. On the phone, we have um, Cynthia Driscoll. Do you want to introduce yourself, Cynthia? Good morning, it's Cynthia Driscoll. I'm joining you by phone so I can transition around the office as needed. Um, Carefree Physical Therapy in, in the town of Carefree. And uh, we are looking forward to a more active fall season. We've uh, stayed open all through the summer and are doing well in our office operations with some adjustments. So it's good to, uh, to hear from everyone and find out what's going on in the local business community. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, I, did I miss anybody? Don't see anybody waving madly. So um, we'll move right on into our speaker because we have a lot of great information to share. So um, with us this morning from the Small Business Development Center, is CJ Johnson, Amber Kellogg, and I see Jeff Swenson um, popped in. Oh, Jeff. So um, I'm going to hand it over to you, CJ, and you can introduce the rest of the group and um, get into our information. Sounds really good. Thank you, Patty, for having us this morning. I really appreciate the time to spend with each of you. Um, I will let each of my teammates introduce themselves, but I myself is CJ Johnson. I've been with the SBDC in Maricopa uh, for a little over a year now, uh, since July. Prior to that, I came from a banking background, uh, approximately 20 blah, 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 whatever years in commercial lending. And so I have been acclimating to the flip side of the people I used to use personally as a lender all the time. They were a real big resource for me. And now I'm on the flip side, you know, building up the businesses and having each of the people that are growing in their own climate, you know, in their industry, making sure that they're on a good, strong path financially and um, have a great team. We've been adding to staff a lot. I'm sure Jeff will touch on that a little bit, but that's a little bit about me. And uh, Amber, I'll let you go next. You're muted. There you go. I got it. Yeah. Thank you so much. My name is Amber Kellogg. Um, good morning. I'm the SBDC funding um, business funding analyst. Um, we're a resource for small business financial literacy is what we try to focus on. Um, with the SBDC, we try to guide, educate, and support business owners. Um, before working with the SBDC, I worked in the lending world just like CJ. Um, I worked at JP Morgan Chase for 10 years. Prior to that, I worked in managing businesses with a limited alternating between two divisions, Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret, you guys might know who they are, for about 14 years. Um, they moved me within seven different states all across the United States, which was kind of cool. Um, finally, I called Arizona home about 13 years ago. Um, I, I just like CJ have a passion for helping business owners. Um, and we know what it takes to sacrifice and the dedication it takes to succeed. And I'm happy to be a part of the discussion today. So thanks for welcoming us. I think Jeff was going to just be a fly on the wall, but we're going to make him say hello too. I need to unmute. Yes, I'm very shy. <laughs> Excuse me. Good morning. And uh, thanks for inviting us to, and uh, you do have the A team, by the way. I'm a part of our leadership team. I've met probably a lot of you. Um, Patty's had me out for several events. So um, it's, um, Kind of strange, but after eight and a half months of doing virtual, 
we're actually getting very used to this mode and actually we're very effective at working with our clients but what you just um what you just saw actually with two two of my colleagues is a special focus for the sbdc and in 2020 we launched this a special focus with a group we have four people on that team that are all sorry guys reformed former commercial lenders <laughs> so commercial uh, lending and capital infusion into companies is critical and we made an investment into that program and uh, it's really been a, a great focus for us it really did help us during the uh, initial stages of the pandemic uh, you're going to hear from from amber and cj about the ppp forgiveness this morning uh, i can tell you that um, our team did a heck of a job uh, during uh, during that uh, early stages with getting lo the idle loans advances and the PPP loans out. I will tell you that we're just the Maricopa Center is um, is probably close to a hundred million dollars in in capital infusion um, through the pandemic. So um, we hit our SBA goals in four months. <laughs> so. So our team is a little tired. They're, they're now getting a little uh, rest in that, but now we're into what we call recovery. And uh, it's very important. We, we consider this the most important because it's repositioning companies. And, and as uh, I think Amber, you mentioned financial literacy, uh, it's critical that they you know, reposition their, their finances into a stronger position because what we're hearing is this isn't, it, well, we know it's not over yet. And, uh, and we, we're hearing that, well, get used to this, that there's more coming. So it's something that we're looking very seriously at how do we strengthen businesses. Um, and as an SBA resource program, we're very proud to be a part of this. And thank you, Patty, for inviting us. Uh, and I'm done. Because <laughs> I have to actually jump into a profit mastery program that we're we're putting on and it starts in about five minutes. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, Jeff, for being being here. So so take it away, CJ. All right. Share my screen. All right, can you see the presentation all right? All right. Perfect. I'm actually going to start off. Happy Thursday morning and welcome. Um, it's exciting to see all so many smiling faces so early in the morning. Um, hope everybody has their coffee. Um, I know I do. I'm, I'm excited to get started on our um, Payment Protection Forgiveness Program. Just kind of an overview. Um, as um, as um, Patty mentioned a minute ago, we are just doing a high level overview of the Payment Protection Forgiveness Program, but keep in mind, um, it is brought to you by the SBDC, so we're happy to answer any questions at the end of the presentation, um, if you wish. Um, I don't see a Q&A, but I do see a chat box, so we'll check the chat box um, at the end, if that's okay, if, if time permits. Um, but welcome, um, and we'll get right into it. Next slide, slide please, CJ. Perfect. So the SBD services, we kind of already introduced ourselves, but the SBD, SBDC services, um, we wanted to make sure that you understood kind of what we do, if you guys don't already know what it is that we do, but our mission is to guide, educate, and support our business clients all the way from the beginning stages and pre-venture clients who simply have an idea to businesses starting out and even as well as long-standing bus existing businesses um, that want to kind of jumpstart their business. Um, our No Free Counseling um, focuses on launching, growing, and sustaining small businesses. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of things that we do within that. Um, we provide these services for no, no fee um, through funding from the Small Business Administration, um, otherwise known as SBA, and Maricopa Community Colleges. That's where Maricopa SVDC is housed out of, is um, the gateway location. Um, our, we have about 10 locations in Arizona, Maricopa SBDC is the largest one. Um, our team of business analysts um, have experience in many industries and you see them listed here. 
um, all of these that we focus on, but um, export, tra ex export and international trade, manufacturing, marketing. Um, we even focus on government contracting. And as Jeff spoke to earlier, CJ and I are part of a funding strategies and lending team um, that we've kind of coined funding analysts. So um, that's kind of what we do as well. But the Maricopa SBDC offers research and training programs as well. Um, gives you access to a lot of tools, which CJ and I will kind of go over a little bit of those tools today, and a ton of resources um, to kind of help you with your business development. We do also have a great relationship. I do think I heard that there was some, um, there's a couple of banks on the call, which I think is exciting because we love to have those um, people in our Rolodex. If I can say that, I know that kind of dates me when I say Rolodex, but um, if I say Rolodex, um, it's an Excel spreadsheet that we filter through, obviously. Um, but um, we love to have those relationships and even insurance people. So we love to collaborate with business owners such as yourselves and try to give business back. That's part of what we do as well. Um, we have relationships with lenders. We kind of know what they were looking for because that is what our background is. Um, and you guys know, as far as PPP forgiveness, as you've been, um, I've heard a few of you say, it's been ever changing, which is kind of, you know, the known, right? That there's, it's ever changing. That's the constant, right, is change. Um, but we have relationships with those lenders and it helps keep us privy to all of these changes as they come. Um, and sometimes there's not a lot of guidance and we try to filter through that and, and make the best decisions we can for our business owners. There's a lot of things that business owners um, need help with and we're here to help, okay? Thank you so much, CJ, next slide. Perfect. The um, SBA had a ton of different, pro I say a ton, they had four different programs that you could, sh you could see here, the IDLE, um, the debt forgiveness, um, and um, let's see, the bridge loans and then also the PPP. But that was through um, COVID-19. They actually had a few of those prior to COVID, but the PPP is a newer one that they had to help small businesses. Um, this morning, we're gonna start with a brief overview of the Payment Protection Program, otherwise known as PPP. So obviously, if you don't know what PPP is, it's Payment Protection Program. There's a lot of acronyms in our business, um, as you guys I'm sure are familiar with, but we're gonna, um, CJ, if you're ready to tell us about PPP, um, we can head to the next slide. All right. Well, again, I wanna thank you for your time. And I know about the stress level that has come into play with all of this COVID stuff and how it has impacted our small business owners. Um, we lived it, breathed, and as Jeff said, we made goal in four months. That is just off the charts. And we were crazy putting in very long hours. So we have a real passion and a, um, a, an empathy for our small businesses that are going through this stress. So we're there with you guys, totally. So I'm hoping that you'll gain a lot from this presentation, but it is high level. If I went into it in depth, this would be a two and a half hour program <laughs> easily. So afterwards we'll give you resources as to how to reach out to us and we can walk each individual business owner through it as they need okay all right you know what i need to go back one sorry um some of the things that are going to be in here are we're going to be reviewing the basics about the program. We're gonna go over the documentation. The documentation is probably one that we get the most questions about. Um, and now we have three applications to look over. Just recently they added another one and it is for loans that are 50,000 and under. Um, we are going to look at the forgiveness timeline and then discuss it, what would happen if Mm, some of it gets forgiven, but not all of it, and you end up with a loan. And then we'll go over the resources that are available. All right. I'd like to discuss some of the various um, terms that are attached to the specific timetables. They're a little bit different in verbiage, but they're so close and they kind of cross over on each other. And I think that's where the confusion comes in. And Congress did their part in making sure that the confusion was going on, even with the easy one, even with the S one. So the coverage periods, uh, what that refers to is that prior to the June 5th, 
um, timeline, borrowers had just an eight week window that they could do the loan for. But then after that, they opened it up to 24 weeks. But those people after the June 5th um, deadline, they had a choice. They could do the eight week or they can continue on and um, expand to the 24 week. Many, many, many did the 24 week. And we heard a lot of complaints by the people that only got the eight weeks. So uh, the alternative periods, uh, SBA recognized that not all business owners pay their employees on the same, you know, the first and the 15th or the 15th and the 30th, or it's always different. Some people pay it a lot more, it's maybe on a weekly basis. So they created an alternative period. So there was a caveat there. If you wanted to do um, based on your payroll period, you could use that. Um, the applications for PPP, as you may know, um, discontinued on August 7th, and now we're in the forgiveness mode. In the forgiveness mode, the um, bankers started taking some, but not all bankers are doing it yet. And we'll touch on that more in the presentation. Um, some of the basics about um, what is eligible um, for PPP has to do with payroll and then has to do with um, other operating expenses. That was another point of confusion many times because they're not so much on the payroll piece, but what else qualified as an eligible um, uh, expense? Because the um, payroll piece of it, you had to have at least 60% of the loan going towards payroll and the remainder could go towards operating expenses. You could use 100% towards payroll, but some people didn't have that big of a payroll to, to do that with, so then they did have some operating expenses that they had incurred. So some of those other expenses were um, business rent payments, um, the mortgage interest, and utilities. And uh, utilities went from your, your phone bill to your, um, I think even for the fuel uh, in vehicles on certain circumstances. Um, let's see, did I cover all that? Yeah. All right. Some of the documentation that's required, and I touched on some that are the common ones, but um, depending on how you keep your books and everything, there could be other things. And each different application, whether it's the 3508 long form or the newest one, the S, um, they each have their own documentation uh, specifics. Um, for uh, the other thing too was that if the uh, loans were 2 million and over, they'll be to the uh, SBA loan reviews. However, when you read the fine print, SBA could actually um, review any and all different ones, no matter the dollar amount at any given time. So the legal, legal language does express that they can go back and ask for a review of anybody's loan. Some of the documentations um, during the covered period or alternative bank accounts, um, if you're using a payroll service, then they can provide that additional documentation there. Uh, some tax forms, or if you're having your accountant do it, um, they can provide that as well. Uh, any receipts that the employer has that has done contributions to the employees in the way of the extras, the uh, benefits, the health benefits and retirement plans, those kind of receipts um, can also be provided. Um, the mortgage interest payments, so if you have mortgage statements, uh, if you're paying lease or, or rent for your business to be in, um, you can provide that lease agreement. Utility payments, this is invoices that are from February 2020 and then paid during the covered period. Um, if you have those receipts and 
somewhere in here, I know that I mentioned that, and I'll mention it several times, that you need to keep your receipts for at least six years. The first form, which is the one that scared everybody the worst, and it's personally scared me too. Um, this form is five pages long. Okay, and that's just the application. The instructions are seven pages long and they interrelate with each other. And so it was really intimidating. I had to read it numerous times to kind of feel semi comfortable with it. And we kept giving that feedback to SBA saying, hey, you know, this is like crazy. I mean, you expect the bankers to do this and our clients to do this is going to be really hard. And so then they came up with the next one. But let's look at this a little bit closer. Um, the 3508, um, it's just saying that you can't have any reductions in employees on their average paid hours. And so as long as you were keeping your employees on staff, even if they weren't there physically working, you were okay. Um, there was times that you might have, you know, laid somebody off, but there was a window of time that you could bring them back in and still be in good graces for the forgiveness piece of it. The covered period is either the 24 week or it is the um, eight week period, all right? And that was that June 5th deadline. So prior to June 5th, only eight weeks. After June 5th, it was eight or 24 weeks. Then they came up with the alternative, as I explained earlier, um, because each individual business does it a little bit different. They knew that they needed to be able to be accommodative of this and making sure that you know they weren't damaging businesses further by trying to make them fit in the SBA box. So they um, made this other um, covered period time so that it would fit more businesses, which it did a lot. Um, borrowers that elect to use the alternative payroll, this is the key thing too. If you choose to do the alternative, you have to stay alternative. That means on everything, how you paid your utilities, how you, I mean, everything is accounted the same exact way. And so if you stay, if you choose it, the main thing to remember is everything has to match up with that in that pay period. That means if you're um, paying your uh, utilities bill, it falls in that window. Okay, so even after and the 24 week period is has ended, if your payroll is covering and it skips into the next week or whatever, it's still covered within that period. The next form is the easy form. And the only thing that's really too different about this is that one, it's cut off two pages and the instructions are a lot um, simpler to manage. And um, the document requirements are very similar. So there's still proof, you still have to provide proof. And uh, it just streamlined it a little bit busy, uh, easier because on the long one, there was like worksheets inside of worksheets and the easy form doesn't have that. It's just straight up application. Um, the biggest thing that I liked about the easy form is it had three qualifiers and you only had to qualify for one of them as a business owner. So when you're looking through these, I have actually cut and paste the definition into them so that you can know exactly what it is that they're asking. So if you can choose one of these three, then you could actually use the easy form. However, let me put that in now with the new one. If your loan is under 50,000 50, and under, you can use that one instead. So this one wouldn't even apply to you. But if it's over 50, then this one, you would have to be able to answer one of these three. So it says here, if you can check one of these, that you're self-employed individual, you're an independent contractor or a sole proprietor, 
who had no employees at the time. Um, you did not include any employee salaries in the computation of average monthly payroll in the borrower's application or the borrower did not reduce an annual salary and hourly wages of any employee by more than 25% during the covered period or alternative period um, compared to any period below on January 1st and March 31st. So instead of me reading all of this, I, I want to just give you, this is the exact verbiage that they do for block number two. And we'll go into a couple examples too. Um, one thing that it also says in this area is that um, you're to ignore the reductions that arose from an inability to rehire individuals that were employees on February 15th. If the uh, borrower was unable to hire similarly uh, qualified employees or unfilled positions on or before December 31st. It said to also ignore reductions in an employee's hours that the borrower offered to restore, but the employee refused. Um, the state of Arizona made it really comfortable for a lot of people with unemployment. And so a lot of people were turning, you know, turning down the offers that their employers were giving them. And that was unfortunate because then as the employer, you had a report that, you know, you offered a job back to your employee and then that's, they would lose that unemployment check. So it was really unfortunate, but um, we kept as, a, as a advisors, we would let the uh, clients know that it was really critical that they explain that to their employees that, Yes, you're getting a great deal with unemployment right now, but as soon as you say no, then I have to report it. And so didn't make for a lot of happy employees on that. And the third box, if you can check one of those, um, the borrower did not reduce any uh, annual salary or hourly wages of any employee by more than 25%. And that's during that covered period or the alternative period. So each of these things here with the easy form, if you qualify for any of those questions, then fine, you, you can use this form. All right, now this is the newest one. It just came out just a short while ago, and this is the 50,000 and under. It's really easy. It's very straightforward. I think that a lot of people are going to be using this one. Um, the um, format is very similar in some aspects to the other ones. The information required is still the same. However, it's more self-certifying on the client's part versus everybody having to go through a lot of um, hoops. You still have to provide backup documentation and the other documentation that it asks for, you do still have to maintain for six years. And that six years starts when you're either funded or forgiven for the loan entirely, or you have a loan that begins. So when that loan begins and is paid off in full, that six year um, retention time begins at that point. Here on the, um, the simple form too, it is pretty easy. A lot of lenders right now, the reason why they're not taking applications is that they are creating an online uh, ability to put your application in place. And that helps a lot because it's um, easier for them to handle the hundreds and the thousands of applications that go through them respectively. So the application online has to resemble and have the exact same information that these SBA forgiveness applications have on them. So that's kind of the drag on it. But um, the main key thing here is to remember that that 60-40 split Wow, that went to the end, hold on one second. That was not supposed to happen. There, sorry guys. 
Um, the main thing here is to remember that 60-40 split, 60 minimum towards payroll, and then 40 can be used towards qualified expenses. Um, and then you submit your form to the lender and maintain your records for up to 60 years. And please remember the forgiveness is not automatic. A lot of people think, well, I've done all these things. There could be things that you considered an expense uh, that isn't in one of the qualifying expenses. So as your SBDC advisors, we would like to go through your application process because what you may be thinking was something that qualified doesn't really and will help you navigate through that process entirely. It's better to, to go through us and get prepared for your lender than to go to your lender and then just kick you back saying, sorry, you don't, you're not approved because of these things. So it's a, hard, it's a lot harder to unring the bell once you go to the lender. You'll be getting a copy of this presentation. So these live links, you'll be able to click on them and go right to them. These are where you will find each of the applications and the instructions that go with them. The timeline that you can expect um, from application to submission, to decisions. Um, it's kind of a lengthy process, it really is. Um, if you don't apply within the 10 months, then your loan is going to become a permanent loan. And it will be for either the two years, if you're an eight week person, or up to the five years, if you were the 24 week person. Once you give it to your lender, they have 60 days to review and um, give a decision to the SBA. And then they send it up to the SBA. And then as they review it, they have 90 days. So essentially you're looking at five months before you find out if you have it forgiven or not. Or not. The lenders have to make a decision and they either are going to recommend that it be approved in full or in part or they deny it. But if the SBA has already pulled the file of the client and is working on it for some reason, then the last one is the one that they're supposed to use. And it just means that the SBA is currently just working on it and looking at it a little bit closer. I would estimate that those are probably the really large loans that they're doing that with but like I said in the language of the loan it says that they can check any loan at any time so now whether they have that kind of time to do that is another story another key piece is that you have 10 months and that 10 months has already started going at the end of the um, uh, coverage period it gives you just 10 months, flat out. Um, if you are on an eight week period, you're well into your 10 months. If you're in the 24 week period, you, you're just coming to it. Depends when you got that loan and when that coverage period, the final coverage period ended. Here's an example of if you had an eight week coverage period, okay? in the event that you had a loan. I had to look at this in a, you know, different lights as a, if I was the business owner and all of a sudden I, they said, sorry, you're denied now, you gotta, you've got a loan on the books and what would happen? So for example, if we had a $5,000 loan that's been helping keep your, you know, employees employed and the economy going, you would incur only about 52 bucks in uh, interest over that 24 month period. Whereas a $20,000 loan, you have about $209 in interest. And if you're interested in what the payments are, you just divide the amounts by that 24-month um, period in that you would um, divide the loan amount and then the interest amount that I posted up there by that 24-month and then add them and you get your monthly payment. So it's not a whole lot. It's really, in, in banking terms, it's very cheap money for a loan. But there are some um, businesses that are just still struggling and that payment is critical. And we can help walk through their financials and see 
how they're utilizing their um, financials in the best way. Are they operating efficiently? And help, you know, help them maybe pivot to something else or just find some weak spots in their financials to be able to, um, you know, find a different direction. Or it may be time just to close doors. And we don't like that, but sometimes that is the best option. Another example underneath the 24 week plan, if you had a $5,000 loan, your interest incurred would be approximately $128. And if it was a 20,000, approximately $500 in um, interest over that 60 months. Again, it's not a lot of interest at all. So um, that was our reassurance that we kept giving back to our clients saying, even if it's not forgiven, it's only a 1% loan. It's only a 1% loan, that doesn't happen. So it's, it's very inexpensive. And when you look at the big picture of how that um, uh, money helped continue your business going forward for that amount of time, I mean, that is a very good investment. But most people, they're gonna qualify for the forgiveness. These two websites, Oh, I'm sorry, Amber, I was gonna take that away. Sorry, go ahead, Amber. <laughs> no, you're good. Gosh, CJ, that was a lot of information, a lot of crucial information, obviously, to help us guide through the forgiveness process, so thanks for that. Um, there's a lot of important details and, and what to expect, um, but we also have additional tools. We love tools here. Um, there's a ton of additional information out there, but just make sure that you, as you're Googling, because if you're like me, I like to Google everything, um, it's important to use viable resources um, we have listed here on this site, um, the U.S. Department of Treasury um, website. There's a link there, a hyperlink that you can click on to go directly to there. And the SBA website as well, um, for, just for additional guidance, um, if you can click on those links once you get this as well. Um, next slide, please. Thanks, CJ. Um, again, we just we went over a lot of information, and I know I'm finance, or maybe I guess it wouldn't be finance, it would be more PPP forgiveness at this point, um, can be overwhelming, but we don't want you to be overwhelmed. Um, there's a lot of things that business owners need help with these days, um, and maybe you don't know who to ask. Um, just keep in mind that the Maricopa SBDC is held here to help. Um, that's what our role is. We're, like I said earlier, we're the largest um, counseling center in Arizona. Um, and we're, we're here to help you with all of these questions. There's kind of a, a way to do that, requesting for counseling. Um, if you look at the link um, at the Maricopa SBDC, um, maricopa-sbdc.com, there'll be a link to request for counseling. Once you do that, you just fill out a form um, and then it goes to our operations department. Our operations department then um, gives a um, analyst to a counselor who's advised um, for your assignment. So they will reach out to you and um, you guys can get going and, and see what we can do to help. And even if it's just to bounce ideas off of, that's, I mean, that's what we do. Um, and we're here to help. And like CJ said, we've come across a lot of people through this um, COVID pandemic um, that we've been able to help. So let us just help you. Um, I, I would just want to add one thing. One of my friends told me one time, um, the only bad conversation is the one that we don't have. Um, and I just, I hope that, um, I know that that may resonate with some of you because there's no stupid question. You hear that little saying all the time, but let us have the conversation with you. Like I said, even if it's just bounce ideas off of you uh, or off of us, that's what we're here for. Okay, um, next slide please, CJ. Thank you. Again, this is both of us. Um, our information is at the bottom, um, our names and our, um, our emails, if you wish to shoot us an email. But again, if you request um, our, choose to request for counseling, use the website at the bottom of the screen. Um, but um, if you thank you guys for taking the time to visit with us today. Um, I'm not sure, Patty, if time permits, but we'd like to take a moment to answer any questions. I didn't see any in the chat, but if anybody has any questions, we'd love to be able to help answer those. Um, CJ and I, um, you know, have a lot of resources. If we can't answer them now, we can certainly, <laughs> we can certainly um, get back to you, but we'd love to answer any specific questions if you guys have any. I have a question. Sure. So earlier in the presentation, um, you mentioned that um, it, once you go to the lender, it gets kind of tricky. 
So is, do you advise um, maybe having one of uh, your staff kind of review the application before you submit to the lender? Most yes. definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's much better for us to find the problems than for them to find the problems. Because once you go to them, mind you, they're doing hundreds of these and they just want to move on to the next and move on to the next and move on to the next. And so we're not like that. We're going to sit down and we're going to have a one on one. Well, virtually, we're going to sit down with you and have a one on one and go over your application and ask you questions. And being a former lender, I'm going to ask you the questions that they would ask. And I'm going to be the devil's advocate and point out, hold on. How can you support this number that you have in there? It's better to, for you to go through it with me and then go in there saying, here it is. These are my numbers. I checked all the boxes. I signed my name and I have my documentation sitting here because they're on, depending which uh, application that you use is going to determine how much documentation they're going to require at that time. Mm -hmm. CJ, just to piggyback off of that, um, Patty, um, you, if you have, um, the SBA, gosh, I'm tongue-tied all of a sudden. If you have the SBA applications, the lender may have their own applications, but the information on the SBA application, if you have that filled out and you take that to the lender and they say, hey, can you just go online to our website and fill this information out? You're going to have the information on your form that you're going to mm -hmm. just be able to plug in. And that is just very helpful. Um, I don't know, because it's it's a little bit of anxiety, right? You're entering a lot of information in there and you want to make sure you don't get it wrong. And I don't want to be audited just like anybody else wants to be audited. So having that information pre-filled um, will help you if you have to use a lender form, you'll have that information at least to be able to transfer um, to the lender. But we're absolutely, yeah, we're, we're able to help. All of our counselors are able to help with, with the PPP forgiveness applications. Yeah, we're all really well versed in it. I will say, and, and CJ said this too about the long form, the, we joke that it's the awful form, but the one that's really long, and that's for larger loans, we request that um, you seek um, advice from your CPA or your accountant on that one specifically, um, just because there's so many calculations that um, we're not, and just keep in mind, like we would be liable, right? So. It's, we need to make sure that you access the right people and you partner with them with your financials because they know your financials, right? So we can look at things and say, yes, it looks right. But as far as the calculations go, you need to partner with your CPA, especially with that long form. That's a great point, Andrew. Thank you for bringing that up too. That is very viable. And also by going through, as I've stated, you can't unring the bell once you fill it in and you've, you've mm -hmm. sent it to your lender and now they have it. So if you've made mistakes or you think, oh my gosh, I should have did it this way afterthought, you can't unring that bell. So that yeah. means your application's going up as is, so. CJ, I see a couple more questions. Um, it looks like Steve is asking, are the loans available still if you already executed an eight week loan? So Steve, I just wanna clarify you, the PPP is no longer available. It closed in August. Is that yeah. what your question is? I don't know if you can um, either unmute or. Yeah, so that's what I thought, but it sounded like you guys were promoting loans still. So I was curious. Oh no, we were just going over the different types of loans that were out there and then how we're focusing on forgiveness because forgiveness is what's um, relevant right now. Okay. But the idle loan is still out there. Yeah, there's an idle loan. It's the um, emergency disaster loan that's still out there. Um, if you wish to, um, have a conversation around that. We'd love to do that as well. Um, it looks like Aaron says he's worked with Yolanda. She's fantastic, by the way. Um, yes, yeah, she's been an amazing resource for this topic and networking. That's awesome. Thank you. You know what, Aaron? I'll let Yolanda know that you gave her a shout out. That's really cool. Um, Cynthia, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, your loan forgiveness is still pending at the time of the at the end of the year. Is the PPP loan amount considered taxable income? CJ, do you know, is it considered taxable income? Have we found that out for definitive yet? Um, I know that there is a movement in Congress right now to get that clarified. However, the IRS code says that because the forgivable amount is like a grant that it wasn't taxable. That's for the IRS code. Yeah. We're hoping for more guidance and that's what you hear a lot when there's government um, 
um, programs such as this, we always ask for more, or, you know, waiting on more guidance or asking for more guidance. So um, I guess, <laughs> Cynthia, um, we could, we have to revisit that, I guess, when, when things come into play um, as they make yeah. more changes. Um, yeah, and if you check back on our website, we have a page dedicated to this. And as yeah. things come up that are new, we always update it. So yeah. you could go for the best places going to the direct source, which is sba.gov. And on sba.gov, they have that section that deals with it. They have the Q&As, um, frequently asked questions. Uh, it's very, very resourceful, but you have to be able to read through, what page are we on now? 18 pages, <laughs> 18 pages of FAQs. So, but they add to it and they keep us abreast on it. We are um, have a weekly meeting with SBA to see if there are any updates. And as we learn it, we push it out to our website and so that all of our clients know that. Bob, Deborah, C, C, thanks for your, um, your warm thoughts. We appreciate that. That's really nice. You're welcome. It looks like Paul has to go too. You guys, thank you so much for going. Um, does anybody have any more questions? I just want to make a comment that um, all the links that you guys have um, talked about today with SBA and SBDC as well as SCORE um, are all on um, the front of our website under resources. So um, if anybody needs help and um, just take a minute, I know this last slide is still up, but if you could jot down um, these ladies uh, contact info, that would be awesome as well. Any other questions? Also, Patty, I wanted to uh, let everybody know that this will be up on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to the Carefree Cave Creek YouTube channel, please do so. And um, there's this and lots of other great information there. That's awesome. Patty, thanks you guys for doing that. That's great. Yes, CJ and Amber, thanks for joining us this morning. And again, uh, folks that are on the call, don't be shy. These, that's what these guys are here for, is to help you uh, through, this, through this process. I've had a couple of chamber members ask me, oh my gosh, you know, how come you ladies didn't help me fill out the paperwork? How come you're not, you know, this or that? We're not the experts. These ladies and the SBDC, they're the experts. So um, we're providing a resource and um, hopefully it's gonna be a wonderful uh, resource for you. So again, thank you ladies. And then before we um, adjourn for today, I just wanna um, let everyone know that we are starting today our 38 days of celebration so we have chamber members that are celebrating um, significant uh, membership anniversaries. They have been, um, we're, well, they, some have been videotaped. We're in the process of uh, doing a lot of videos for the next uh, week and a half or so. And then the culmination of the 38 days of celebration will be on December 9th, um, 2020. So uh, again, we'll reach out to you for the details of that event, but today, watch Facebook because it will be our first day out of the 38 days. And um, I guess we can take guesses um, later on through email and whatnot of who our first um, honoree will be. So um, with that, um, thank you all for joining us. Thanks again to CJ and Amber. And also um, tell Jeff, thanks for popping in and good to see him. And have a great day, you guys.